I had was scratching my head uh, on Friday and today trying to think what to say about a dollar that got weaker when the aggressive rate hikes are just all the more in the, you know, something you can bet on now, at least for a while. How do you put this together? Is it something about looking down the road and saying the dollar's risen so much, we're getting closer to the peak and it's time to look at other currencies or what? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. I think over over the next three to four months, um, dollar will continue to keep uh, moving higher. Uh, and that's really consistent with the recent FOMC Fed meeting we had where, you know, they said they're going to slow the pace, but push on peak rates for higher upside there. So, of course, this translates into higher yields, which is supportive for dollar. Um, and, of course, um, not forgetting that we had the not jobs number. Um, and the jobs number, again, um, was while it was, it did beat expectations. Um, I must say that uh, when we look at three-month uh, averages or six-month averages, they're still all above 300,000 for non-farm payrolls. So this being a little bit south of that, maybe points to very, very gradually slowing uh, labor markets, if at all. So do you think that, but is the dollar going to keep rising as much as it has? And I guess it's kind of hard to make that blanket statement looking at the index, because if you look at Gil, if you look at uh, the British pound, for example, we know we can pretty much bet that it's going to continue to get weaker against the dollar for its own reasons. Yeah, but look, I think um, beyond Q1, when we move into Q2 onwards, we think we are of the view that the Fed will probably have peaked uh, their, um, you know, reached the terminal rate by Q1 next year. And thereafter, we do expect a little bit of consolidation in the dollar. Now, I think a couple of things that we're really looking at beyond, I guess, Q1 next year is really U.S. rail yields. Um, they have moved up very swiftly and uh, at a, you know, and from a technical perspective at 1.7% roughly. A lot of this, you know, dollar strength and rate hikes are all already priced in. And generally, higher U.S. Rail, rail yields point to higher U.S. dollars. So we think that at some point of time, these are going to now approach a little bit of stabilizing. And that should then um, move into a little bit of a consolidation along the dollar. We are not there yet. And the second thing is, obviously, over the last six weeks or so, we have had reducing negative growth momentum from other countries. So that part of the U.S. exceptionalism, I think that was a function of a weakness in China and Europe. I think a lot of that in the recent weeks has sort of been improving overseas. So that probably will again point to that that slowing of the dollar, but not so soon, of course. Is it? Further downside when it comes to the Aussie dollar, particularly as we get COVID zero staying in place in China, obviously iron ore is a big factor there as well. Yes, I think, um, of course, Australian dollar is a, a function of uh, the way the market moves. And um, we do see, um, you know, the range between the Aussie to state, between state between that 62 to 60 mark as we go into year end and beyond. Uh, towards the year end, of course, we do have a little bit of seasonality that comes into play, which points to a higher Aussie. So we may see it currently stabilize around current levels. Uh, but going forward, we talk about uh, divergence or, or rate differentials. Um, you know, two-year Aussie uh, U.S. Uh, yields are at their most negative uh, level since COVID-2020 March, right? So, um, again, in the favor of a strength for the U.S. versus Aussie. What about the yuan? Because there has just been a lot of uncertainty when it comes to how much weakness yes. in the currency the PBOC will actually tolerate. Now, you would imagine there would be further downside given that they've at least officially indicated they're not veering away from COVID zero anytime soon. Yeah, look, I think with that, with the CNH or the CNY, um, yes, we saw basic, you know extreme moves on Friday, but I think it should stabilize at current levels. I think next, um, you know, we know PBOC is on an easing path. Uh, we expect that to continue. But I think um, they have also come out to say that there's only, they're not looking to protect a specific level in the CNY, but more in the pace of the move. So, of course, you can't fight the Fed, you can't fight the dollar. This should move towards, you know, for the weakening of the CNY, but more in an orderly manner, if anything at all.